Hi everybody, this is Gijs again with another video and I hope you are doing well. This time it is a tutorial, a tutorial on how to fit a backpack. Um, this might come in handy if you're planning to buy a new backpack or the backpack that you already own sits uncomfortably on your back during your hikes or trekkings. And in this video I'm going to explain about how to measure the correct torso length and also how to fit the backpack perfect to your body so you can have many, 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 many comfortable kilometers or miles with your backpack. Enjoy the video! And welcome back to the tutorial on how to fit a backpack. If you are a returning visitor to my channel, then I would like to say welcome back. And also many, many thanks for all your likes and also all the comments. That really makes my work worthwhile. If you're new to my channel, then you might not know that I am a 100% independent reviewer. Manufacturers are not make paying me for the reviews that I normally do. Uh, reviews on backpacks, like over here, on shoes, uh, on bikes, and also on watches, and sometimes a DJI drone. Now, if you're done with watching at the end of this video and you like what I do, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Instagram and like my Facebook page as well. Um, it really helps making more reviews for the future. So many, many thanks in advance already. Now, let's start with the tutorial on how to fit a backpack. Um, the fitting of a backpack basically starts with sizing. And with sizing, I don't mean the volume of a backpack, but I mean the torso length. And now I might say something that you don't know, and I need to explain this, but I can't do this all by myself. So let me introduce to you my lovely assistant. Introducing Jaukje, my dearest. And Jaukje is a name from the totally north of Friesland, uh, the Netherlands, which is a very, very, very typical Dutch name. Now, totally comfortable on camera? <laughs> totally, you know. <laughs> totally, I know. You don't like this, I know, but thanks anyway. Um, would you mind turning around? And a little bit more. And a little bit more. Yeah, I'll tidy this up. Now, what you do need if you want to measure the torso length, which is what it, this is all about, you need, of course, a tape measure. And this is, of course, the one that I borrowed from her. Uh, but if you have a Stanley, a metal one, that will work as well. It needs to be a little bit flexible. That's more convenient. Now, what you do need now is basically two points on the body. And the first point, you will find it to put your hands on top of your hip bones on the Basically that little hill that is there, the Elia Crest, I believe it's called in English. Uh, not totally sure here. Now, what you see is that her thumbs, how thumbs they will have a line in between. Now, in the middle of this line, this is where your first point is of what you should measure. The second one is, and now you can do this at home or wherever you're watching this video, just put your chin on your chest and feel in your neck. And then you will feel this big lump bone. There are a couple of bones, but there's one big one. Um, and at Jaukje's neck, it is here. This is the C7 vertebrae. And this is the second point that you need for measuring the torso length. Now, you can stand up right again. Now, what you do, you take the tape measure. And of course, let's start at the top. You take this point, you put the tape measure there, and then you go downwards to the point where the thumb basically points to this middle point. Now I see this is 49 centimeters, which is about 19 inch, I believe. So this is the torso length. If you're going to look for a backpack, this is the first size that you need. Now there is a second one that not a lot of people talk about. Yeah, you can turn around again. And the second one is basically um, the width of the hips or the circumference. Is that maybe the better word? Now what you do is you take the tape measure again and at women's hips you take the widest point and this is about 99 centimeters now if i do this by myself and this is something that you can do by yourself um, it is 90. if you measure the torso length and you don't have an assistant or Jauke has me as an assistant in this case. If you do this in front of a mirror or you just do it at home, then if you measure it, um, and it is quite possible, you just do it like this, you feel the bump and you feel it here, then always do it three times. 
add them together, divide them by three, and then you get a correct, basically average number. Now, um, measuring the torso length, uh, is of course, it's not an exact science, but it is an indication number on the backpack that you need to buy. Now, thank you so much for this moment. Um, go back to whatever you were doing, your excuse for the moment. Let's do some video magic again. Now, with my wife out of the camera again, she's probably more comfortable. She doesn't know that she still have to come back later. Uh, and with the tape measure around my neck, which looks a little bit like I am a London tailor for very expensive suits. Let's talk a little bit more on um, the sizes we just measured. One thing that I should um, say as well is that if you are going into a shop to buy a new backpack and you don't know the si your sizes basically, and the people who are in the shop who are not measuring whatever you are, then you should really think again because um, yes there are shop owners that know a lot about backpacks and about people and they just eyeball you and they pick the correct size but i think that like we say in dutch meten is weten which translates into like measuring is like a exact science which is always better now i must say that what we just measured it's not really an exact science that is always spot on because bodies vary a lot and backpacks vary a lot now this was a nice little bridge to the backpacks behind me because the torso length and also the hip circumference what is also important is not every backpack is of course the same now what a lot of backpack manufacturers do nowadays is that they make the backpacks in different sizes and sizes i'm not talking about volume i'm talking about the torso length about the back length of a backpack basically now some manufacturers and let me take a couple of um examples and it's not about the brands in this case it's more about what kind of backpack it is like this mammoth it is a day to weekend backpack um, it's got a fixed back length so if you are planning to buy a day pack for a couple of hours to maybe a weekend away and you buy the smaller volumes then a lot they don't have this adjustable back length so if you buy that one make sure that you pick a backpack that fits to your torso length and also fits around your hips the same for the pinkish one which is of course in this case it is a female backpack uh, but this is also one with a fixed back length but there is a little bit of adjustment room up here now so that fits a little bit more uh, torso length if we go to the sort of pinkish Faudet that I have over here, then you will see that on the strap, the back length ranges from small to medium to large to extra large. So that means that basically this whole piece of the back where the shoulders are attached to, the shoulder straps are attached to, you can move it up and down. One remark that I should make on backpacks that fits all sizes this is not really the case. And that's got a lot to do with the load lifters that are on top here. I'll explain a little bit more on the load lifters themselves as well. But you only change this. You don't change what's above here. So if you are going to buy a backpack with a very long adjust or a large adjustable range from S to XL, um, be aware that the best perfect backpack is in the middle of this size range. Now for me, this is a perfect backpack when I am between the medium to large range well, i'm small with my back length of 53 i'm always on the verge from medium uh, small to medium so just be aware that one size doesn't fit everybody um, the other backpack that i've got here is a osprey backpack and they have got a back panel which is also adjustable um, but this one comes in sizes and in this case you can read it on the side of the backpack there's a little label saying that this is a m to l backpack so they have a s and m as well and a large and extra large so there's this backpack it's the kestrel 68 by the way i did a review on that on my youtube channel as well i'll put the link up there and also in the description below so if you're interested watch that one as well now the range the basically the 48 centimeters to 58 centimeters what osprey does it's a velcro piece um, you, you can see all the marks and with my length I'm somewhere in the middle so this is a smaller adjustment range than for example um, the pink reddish Faudé that I have here now one backpack that you might have seen if you follow me already once uh, sometime is the review of the Fjallraven Shinji 40 
8. Now, because this is a unisex model, um, we've chosen to demonstrate the rest of this video with this backpack, also because it is a very clean backpack. Um, so it's very easy to show you what I want to tell you basically about how to adjust and to fit the backpack to your body so that it sits comfortably during your trekkings. And now it's time to get my wife back again. Now, welcome back. Feeling a bit more comfortable? A bit, yes. Okay. Now, we did of course some preparation. Um, we adjusted this backpack already to Jokje's back length. Um, one thing that I would like to explain, you see me doing this. Every backpack, most of them, especially the bigger ones, they've got this handle and this is where you grab a backpack. So when you go out for a lunch and you take the backpack off your back, do it with this one. And when you get up after lunch, use this one because I see a lot of people using the shoulder straps which is quite stupid because in that case you will put a lot of pressure if there's 20 kilos in the backpack you put a lot of force on just one strap basically and it is made to be on two so that's why you need to have the handle now let's try this on your back um, what we also did, and it's something that I always do when I test backpacks for my website or for the YouTube channel, is I always put a lot of weight in the backpack. Of course, for a day pack, it's a bit less than for a full trekking backpack. And what I do, I use, except for my normal gear when I go out camping, I use bags filled with sand or sometimes, you know, these weights, because this gives me a very good way of putting the right amount of weight into a backpack that if I have a backpack that I always test it with the same uh, amount of weight. Now if you go into a shop and you try a backpack in the shop be sure that the shop assistant puts weight into the backpack as well because without weight of course every backpack will feel very comfortable. Now um, I put some weight in this one it's about 8 kilograms uh, I normally test with 8 to 15 kilograms ranging on the type of the backpack. Um, what we start with first is of course to put the hip belt around the waist. What you see as well is that it's pretty loose. When you have a backpack on your back and you go for a rest, what you do is loosen all the straps and also this one. What most people do, they don't loosen the straps. You just get rid of the backpack, um, which also means that the wear on the backpack will be faster. And when you put it on again, I see a lot of people, especially with the hip belt, they go like, oh, this is difficult. Why? Because they just didn't untie it. Now, uh, put it together. And because we did some preparation already, of course, you see it sits perfectly on Jauke's hips. Um, what I did not mention yet is that there is a difference between uh, the hip belt on a lot of ladies' backpacks. They are different from the male ones. And uh, let me grab the pinkish hair gloves one. What you will see on this backpack, and it's just something I would like to show you. Um, because this is a universal model, you see that the hip belt is basically one big wide strap. A lot of backpacks that are for women, they've got a hip belt with basically a, a strap that is like a V-shape. And why is this? Well, basically because if you've got this, the curvy hips of a lady, um, this one, you can adjust it way more in the angle of a lady's hip. This is something that you will have to be aware of if you are a woman. A uh, woman, uh, put it back again. The funny thing is that I often wear ladies' backpacks because I am a rather small guy. Now, um, with the hip belt, you see that why we measure the circumference of the hip is that if you don't know this and you go online and shop for a backpack, then the back length can still be okay. But what will sometimes go wrong is that if you are a little bit in a between a S, M or the ML size, for example, that the hip belt is not fitting to your hips, that there is too little play basically on this spot. Uh, and if there's no play, you cannot have to, you cannot put all the weight onto your hips. Now, talking about weight, what you will see, maybe you turn in this way next to me, then I can show you that the shoulder straps, they are loose, which means that all the weight of the pack is onto Jauke's hips and this is how you should fit a backpack. 80% of the weight should be onto the hip belt basically. Now let me get my tape measure in a 
nice fashionable manner here. Um, okay, now face the camera again, please. The next thing that you do is of course adjust the shoulder straps. Um, and it's just a matter of pulling them. Make sure that they're comfortable. And also here is a difference between a women's pack and a male pack. Women's backpacks, they've got the shoulder straps, which are mostly way more curvy to give more space to the breast so that the backpack sits comfortably also in the breast area. Now, when you've adjusted the shoulder straps correctly, um, then the next step is to adjust the load lifters. The load lifters, they are positioned on top of the shoulder straps and they go to the top of the backpack. And the load lifters are there to stabilize basically the top of the backpack. And if you don't have the load lifters, then this part might go everywhere and that's not just not good for the balance. Now, in a perfect world, um, the load lifters should have something like a angle between the 30 and the 55 degrees. 45 degrees is a nice easy average because everybody knows 45 degrees. And then you'll just adjust the load lifters till they are nice and comfortable that there is tension on them. Now, um, there is one thing that you should also know about the load lifters, is that um, if you are hiking on a normal trail, have the load lifters like this. 45 degrees angles and not too much pressure on um, the backpack itself. Now, when you are walking uphill for the balance, it is very nice to pull the backpack a little bit more towards you. So what you do, you take the load lifters and you pull the backpack a little bit more to your back because then it's more one uh, unit with your body and that is good for the balance and also because you transfer the weight more into the center point of your body so that is better for the knees better for your hips now when you're going downhill what we're doing naturally is we move a little bit forward what moves what happens then is that you should loosen the load lifters and i'll do both now at the moment so that the backpack basically leans a bit back so that the balance is going to be again in the middle of your body um, on your in the center of your hips and also in the center of your knees so that's going to be one line that's just for the comfort of hiking and for the safety of course now with the load lifted adjusted there's only one thing that we need to do and that is fit the chest strap now the chest strap connects basically the shoulder straps and what it does it creates for a better balance and it prevents the shoulder straps from sliding sideways most of the time there is a whistle on top for safety reasons of course and what you should know is that the shoulder strap it can be uh, the shoulder strap the chest strap can be adjusted in height and in this case it's with a sort of a buckle slider and um, but the chest strap it should be positioned on top of your I don't know what this is called. Uh, it's, it's your chest bone, probably. It's exactly where my microphone is. Um, and with a women's backpack, this is a little bit more critical than with a male backpack because of the breast. They don't need to interfere with each other. So if you try this in the shop, try sliding the chest strap up and down as well. Now, if you're done with fitting into a shop or when you order one online, then always start wearing the backpack for about 20 minutes at least. Do a little hike. Um, so that you feel that the backpack is comfortable on your back or not. Um, and this sometimes, like I say, it's not an exact science uh, what we're doing here. Um, it's just like the, getting the right feel with the backpack. So you'll have to try it maybe a few times. Maybe adjust the back length a little bit more to your perfect fit. If the backpack doesn't fit very comfortable, um, there are a couple of things that you can check. And the first and mostly the simple one, most simple one is that if you turn a little bit towards me again, is that if you check the load lifters, see that the load lifters are correct, that there's not too much pressure on them because I see a lot of people who just yank the load lifters so that the backpack sits really close. So that means that your chest is going to be pulled backwards again. The natural reaction is again that you put a lot of pressure against to the fourth and that means a lot of tension in your upper body and that's just not comfortable. The other thing that you should check and this is something that you can do in the shop as well or at home with a mirror if you don't have a friend around is just to see if the shoulder straps are nicely connected to the body if there's a nice curve in it that says no gaps in between them that makes that the backpack is also comfortable. Do you have gaps in between then you know the back length is not adjusted properly or the backpack is not your size. Now um, one final remark, and I will turn a little bit back again, is that um, 
especially with women's pecs, this part is really critical in the fitting process. So fit in a shop or if you're at home, fiddle around with it so that it really sits perfectly to your body. Now, this is what I wanted to tell you about measuring your torso length and about your hip belt um, circumference and also on how to adjust the backpack. Now, if you're comfortable with the backpack at the moment, um, you know what's coming next. So if you, you want to go, you can take a hike. Hey. Ciao. Hi. <laughs> with Jauke Gons, she's probably more happy because she really hates being on videos. Now, if you didn't hate what I'm doing, but really like it, then please like the video and leave a comment below. And also, if you've got any remarks, suggestions or questions, please use the comment section below because I'm more than happy to answer everything that you can throw at me. Now, if you liked this video, then please continue watching and I'll put a playlist up here with in it the reviews of the Osprey Castle 68 and also of the Fjell Raven Shinji 48 that just left the building with Jauke. And I'll put some nice tents in there. So if you like to see some more reviews on outdoor gear, stay tuned. Now, if you're done for today with watching, then I would like to say enjoy the outdoors and stay safe. Ciao, ciao! Bam! And now it's the job again in getting this one in a nice little, oops, little roll again. And this is really a fiddly work that I've been doing so many times during this video shoot. But it's meditative. <laughs>